Brian B. says, Dr. Steve, is there any chance that Trump, that Trump, General Flynn, or others can sue the corrupt U.S. government for damages for all the costs from their unjust charges? I, You know, it's funny. That's exactly what my wife was asking the other day. And I, he's done it, gang. I don't know how, but Mike Lindell has done it. He's taken what was already one of the most comfortable pillows on the market, and he made it even better. That's right, my pillow 2.0 is here. With Mike's new cooling fabric technology combined with his original my pillow fill gang, it's truly the most comfortable pillow out there. It's always cool to the touch and provides some of the best neck support I've ever experienced in a pillow, leading to some pretty incredible sleep. For a limited time, Mike is providing over $150 off his new my pillow if you use code Turley. That's right. MyPillow.com slash Turley will get you massive savings on a set of four MyPillow 2.0s. Mike is obviously, he's a true patriot. He's a friend of the show and he's a bona fide American entrepreneur. It's really a great product. So don't wait. Mike told me these new pillows are selling like hotcakes and this offer will not last forever. Click on the link in the description below and use code Turley to get your MyPillow 2.0 today. I, you know, I heard Vivek, right? He had, he was suing the Justice Department. I don't know if you, but I don't know if you can. Um, he should be able to, my heavens, he should be able to, to do this, especially, uh, especially not like Adam Schiff, who we know lied. He knowingly lied, but provably lied about the whole Russian collusion nonsense. He did not, he, he knew it was all um, straight from, uh, from the Hillary Clinton campaign, and he just participated in it, and the media participated in it along with him. So, yeah, I don't know the answer. I don't know. Would have to talk to a lawyer on that whether or not he could um, sue. But if he could, I'm sure he would. Hmm. Barry says that you mentioned the fires in Hawaii could be a diversion, but what about the rumors that the neighboring wealthy landowners wanting to buy those properties that burned long before the fire? Yeah, that wanted to, the uh, wealthy landowners wanting to buy. Yeah, yeah. So those are but that's so there's so there's there's two alternative explanations. Right? They're not conspiracy theories. They're alternative explanations, both of which are rooted in the fact that these fires were intentional. And one is that this is this is being driven. Well, they're both being driven by. Uh, uh, by by the the conglomerates, the big actors, but in different ways. So one, it, this is being driven by the Oprahs and the, the, the uh, Black Rocks, and who who want that property but couldn't get it because the residents were very Hawaiian nationalists. They were not they were not American nationalists. They were Hawaiian patriots who uh, who saw holding on to that property as a as a form of protest against the powers that be um, in the United States, which they don't, they, they don't like. Versus the second explanation, which is this is a green project. They wanted to basically raise the, the, uh, the neighborhoods and now rebuild them, but uh, in accordance with a Green New Deal. Those are your two, those are your two theories, but, but, but both of them are, are very much linked to this notion that there are some very nefarious characters who want that property. We've discussed this question a few different times. I don't think we've talked about it in the last few weeks, but there is an ongoing concern, of course, for what would happen if Harris replaced Biden, if he got impeached, fell ill, <laughs> died in office. Yeah. Um, but specifically, there's a lot of questions about his impeachment. Um, Larry had a question about that, as well as um, Charles. That was your question as well. So if Biden is impeached, what are they going to do about cackling Kamala? De well, okay, so Victor Davis Hanson is making the argument this is the only reason why Biden is still in office. It is an unsustainable um, presidency. I mean, he's, you know, he's he has all, the, he's exemplifying all the characteristics of cognitive degeneration you know he's he's he physically shuffles he doesn't really walk he shuffles and he he has a very hard time pronouncing words let alone making any sentence sense in his sentences and and the like so he has he has i mean if this were anyone out else uh he would have he would have if this were 
if there were if this were anyone else in the VP slot, okay, if this was Gavin Newsom, uh, he'd be president right now. Uh, Biden would find a way of being able to just say, just very, you know, in a very dignified manner, bow out, give his presidency over. They, the bottom line is Democrats are scared to death of, of cackles. They, they are absolutely scared to death of her. Um, they're scared to death of her politically because she's such an horror. You know, she was a diversity hire, so she's a disaster. Uh, there was no, there was, n there was no logic for this pick at all. It's not like she comes from a battleground state where she's very popular and will bring out the vote, or, you know, it's not like she's bringing out any particular demographic that's needed. She was a diversity hire from California, and. Um, and this just protected Joe's bona fides while they were rigging an election. And they are they believe that were power to be transferred to Kamala, it would be an electoral disaster the Democrats haven't seen since McGovern or, or since uh, Mondale. So they're scared to death of her, no question. So I don't think you have to worry about impeachment. Uh, it, I mean, I don't think you have to worry about Senate conviction, you know, uh, he could certainly get impeached in the House, but then the Senate has to convict him. The Senate Senate's not going to convict him. That's not going to happen. It's more of a message that you're sending. And you're also turning the conversation away from indictments to impeachment. So you're forcing the hand of the media to have to cover something they don't want to have to cover. Things like that. There's some strategy there with with the impeachment. But you don't have to worry about that. The, the question really, uh, as, as VDH was pointing out, is really you just have the mo much more basic practical question of whether Biden can even stand up anymore, whether he can actually even just be able to read from a teleprompter anymore, which is mine has a very hard time doing. And, uh, and if he can't, then what? And that's why Roger Stone thinks Michelle Obama's going to have to come in and save the day because they're not going to replace Kamala with a white, you know, male governor from California. That's his, that's his theory. I still think that's a little bit far-fetched, but uh, regardless. So they, they're scared to death. They don't know what to do. And hence, uh, hence they're just throughout another indictment. <laughs> that's, that's the only thing they know how to do at this point. Seriously. So this is an interesting question from Catherine. It's always important to understand the argument from all sides. Um, she wants to know, why is there so much backlash against Sleepy Joe about the wildfires in Hawaii? Do they want him to send firefighters or just the fact that he's ignored it? Thanks. Yeah, so the only, so the, uh, the media isn't giving him any backlash. It's it's more conservative um, commentators and, and media that's pushing back against him. And uh, Aaron Fox News, uh, Ducey, uh, in his questions, he'll 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 push back. But uh, but yeah, it's it's basically to show the the massive discrepancy between um, Joe Joe Biden, what he is paying attention to, which is vacationing. This is the most vacationed president we've ever had. Forty percent, I believe, his presidency has been. Uh, spent uh, relaxing, and then and keep in mind that doesn't even count the fact that he puts a lid on uh, many of his activities past early afternoon. He doesn't work very long. This this is this is a presidency that is run by a very very different group of people other than the president and vice president. So uh, so I think they just wanted to show how out of touch he is, and just uh, get some easy easy uh, points scored that way. But no, I don't I don't. I mean, I think they expect him in, in, you know, in good faith. I do think they expect him to do something akin to what Trump did in East Palestine when he, uh, when he went and visited uh, people who were suffering from that horrible, you know, uh, chemical explosion, that train derailment. Um, and uh, th they are expecting Biden. You know, he is commander in chief. He is a, he is a ceremonial figure who can, you know, who, who defends the country, but who also weeps when we weep and who comforts and, you know, he, he brings, he's supposed to bring a, a, that, that sentiment to the job and he just seems to be so aloof and attached. So I think that's probably where they're coming from.
So who's really actually in charge here? <laughs> Do you have a prediction? Well, I mean, there, you know, you have some theories that saying in the end it's uh, it's Susan Rice, it's Obama himself. Although, I, again, I think that's a little far fetched. But it, it's his it's his cabinet of crazies. Basically, they're the ones who are who are basically unleashing uh, woke hell uh, throughout the deep state, um, and then weaponizing uh, the uh, the law so as to be able to intimidate everybody else. And keep them afar, keep them away from them while they they uh, invoke their damage.